Okay, let's think back to our, again, ball going across the desk, or if you wanted to think about the, uh, the girl riding her bike. Let's think about what a velocity versus time graph looks like for constant motion, first of all, because I want to make sure you're clear on that. If you do a velocity versus time graph for constant motion, what you have is a nice horizontal line. If an object is moving at a constant velocity, you ask it how fast it's going, no matter where along the trip you ask it, it's going to give you the same answer, same answer, same answer. And therefore, it's going to wind up being a horizontal line. Now I'm going to go ahead and erase that, erase my whole thing. Now let's think about what would be different if we, in the example we just saw, um, had a ball rolling down a ramp. Well, first of all, when it first leaves, when you, when you first start caring about it, at time zero, how fast is it going? Well, it essentially just left your hand. It's got a velocity of zero to begin with. But then, let's say one second later, it starts to roll down the hill. It, now it's going to have a velocity of something other than zero. So at time one, it might have a velocity of you know whatever, you know, some positive value. And after two seconds, it'll be going even faster. And after three seconds, faster still. After four seconds even faster. So notice these, it's going to be, when we ask it, hey, hey ball, how fast are you going? It's going to give me a larger answer every time. And it turns out with a ball rolling down a hill, you wind up with a velocity versus time graph that is not a horizontal line, but rather a, di a diagonal line. And that, that line, of course, has a slope which is significant. We're going to talk more about that in module two, but for the time being, uh, suffice it to say that a velocity versus time graph, if you see it as a diagonal line rather than a horizontal line, that tells you that you have a changing velocity.